Good morning. Good morning. Oh my, this is awesome and wonderful to see all of you here. To know that many are watching online, we welcome you as well as we come together for this Easter service. We've been on this journey of Holy Week, and if you were here on Friday, it was very somber. We stripped off the altar, and we had a black cross in the back where we took those rocks with our sins, and we presented them at the foot of the cross. And now with the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, we see new life and renewal. Pastor John's going to give a message in a little while, and he's going to help us look how the empty tomb changes everything and how that tomb uh, sets us free from guilt and from death from the old life, and that we can get plugged into this new life by the power of our risen Savior. But first, our handbells are going to get us prepared to worship. What a great way to enter into worship. Thank you for all the time you put into that. Many of you don't know they wanted me in the bell choir, but I kept <laughs> dropping the bell in the middle of the song. So, But all glory, laud, and honor. What a great song for us to enter into. Let's stand as we begin this worship service. We begin it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is alive. Let us shout, Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ has overcome death 
has opened a gate of everlasting life for us. Let us shout, Alleluia! Alleluia! The Lord's mighty arm has triumphed. His power has brought us victory. Let us shout, Alleluia! Alleluia! Jesus is alive! Let's sing about that risen Savior. When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized that we might have a new life, just as Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God, that when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, we may also be revealed with him in glory. Gracious Father, I am dead in my sin, and have no power to rise. I have offended your majesty and denied your rule in my life. I have brought death and darkness where you once said, let there be light. I deserve the doom you have decreed. I am dead in my sin and have no power to rise. But Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Since we've been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive our guilt and set our minds on things above. Let us be raised with Christ. This is what is written. Christ will suffer and will rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. The good news of God's grace and love 
has now been proclaimed to each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. Because Jesus is alive, we now have God's forgiveness. Let us shout, Alleluia! Let us pray together. Almighty God, today we joyfully celebrate the glorious resurrection of Jesus from the grave. By your life-giving spirit, may we be raised from our dead, sinful nature to a new life dedicated only to you. We pray all this in the name of our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're all brothers and sisters. Let's take a few moments to share the peace of Christ. I know there's different people around you. Introduce yourself. They're your brothers and sisters. very very glad that you're here with us today and there's an open invitation to come back because we're going to be here again next week again at 8 30 and 10 9 30 and 11 in the other room we would love to have you come back and worship next week's going to be a special weekend it's going to be our mission celebration a great opportunity to see some of the places we go in missionary work to share the gospel around the world uh, you'll see in front of you connection cards please fill one out whether you're a regular worshiper, whether it's your first time, we're certainly glad you're here. We'd love to have you fill it out. We're going to put that in the offering plate. There are prayer cards in front of you. We've got 100 people just waiting to pray for whatever's going on in your life. You can write those requests down, and we'll put those in the offering plate as well. Uh, there's an a opportunity for you to be involved in all the different activities that we have here. So you go to royred.org. Try to remember that. I know you check your Facebook every day and all your other social media. Go there. Figure out what's going on. It's your church. And we want you to know what's going on and be involved with all of that. We also have Realm and Facebook. We also have Pastor John send out a message to let everybody know what's going on. And weekly calendars, they're in the back if you want to pick one of those up. And uh, after the service, if you'd like some additional personal prayers, uh, Evelyn will be up over on this side here by the communion rail. But let's get into God's Word right now. Bob, if you would help us get going. The reading for this Christ, or Easter morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you which you received, on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you were saved, if you firmly hold to the word. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received and passed on to you is first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, through some have fallen asleep. 
Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles, and last he appeared to me also, as I were one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Let's stand for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel message comes from Matthew 28, and it says it all. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and was going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys were paying attention. That's great. Okay, good. Well, welcome. Happy Easter to all of you. I'm the traditional music director. My name is Jen Manthe. Happy to have the handbells here today, which you saw Matt was directing, and I got to play, which is kind of nice. But today I'm directing the choir today. But today you guys actually have a part in our song as well. It's Alleluia Sing Jesus. We have some wonderful brass upstairs that's going to be playing along. There is a part in there that says choir only. That will be them. But you guys are the congregation, so you get to join in on a couple verses, verses 1 and verse 4. So watch the screens and sing along with us. I hope you enjoy.
Well, happy Easter, church. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yeah, you know, he, oh, thank you, thank you. He is risen indeed. Easter is all about the empty tomb, isn't it? And the empty tomb is all about life. 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, I am God in human flesh, and people are going to kill me on a cross and then bury me in a tomb for three days, but I am not going to stay dead. I am going to raise myself back to life to prove that I am who I claim to be. And that's exactly what he did, and the empty tomb proves it. It proves that Jesus is God, that he's alive, and that he has succeeded in breaking sin's grip, overcoming the power of death, and freeing us from the devil's accusations. And as amazing as all of that is, there's more. Look at this. 2 Corinthians 5 says, Jesus died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So what is that verse saying? That verse is saying is that because of the empty tomb, there is a new life that is available to you, a better life. I think most of us are familiar with the saying of living the good life. And I think it also would be fair to say that most of us do live the good life. We have good homes and good families and good jobs and good health. And so we could say, yes, I am enjoying the good life. And you know what? Compared to the rest of the world, you'd be right. But what if there was something more than just the good life? What if there was something better? What if you were missing out on something absolutely fantastic and you didn't know that existed? Wouldn't you want to know about it? Yes, probably. I know I would. But here's the problem. So many people in our world today, they simply settle for what they already have because they don't know there's something better out there. Let me explain it maybe this way. When I was a child, my mom told me when I was in grade school, she told me that she fed me when I was a baby, she fed me uh, strange spinach. And she said that I thought it was yummy. Frankly, I don't know if that's true, but, you know, I didn't know better at that time. I was a baby. She was putting it in my mouth. I was hungry. What did I know? What I do know, though, is that about second or third grade, I discovered these things called SpaghettiOs. <laughs> and my eyes were open to something I had never known before. And then, and then I got into, like, McDonald's hamburgers and French fries. And all of a sudden, there was the things that I didn't know about that were so much better than strained spinach. <laughs> Here's my point. I believe, I am firmly convinced that God has brought every single one of you here, all of you watching online right now, I'm absolutely convinced that God has brought you here to let you know that Jesus and the empty tomb provide you with something so much better than just the good life. Okay, something so much better than, you know, feeling good and looking good and having it good. Something so much better. And I say that because when it comes to the good life, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there are some dirty little secrets about the good life that people don't like to talk about. Dirty little secrets that are just beneath the surface. For example, when it comes to living the good life, one of the dirty little secrets that people don't like to talk about is that people who live the good life are people who feel exhausted. People who live the good life feel wiped out. I've, as a pastor, I've had people come up to me and say, Pastor John, I just, I just, I, I can't keep up with this pace. I go home and I crash. I, I'm worn down. I'm overloaded. And I believe them. Because with the good life, sure, you may look good and feel good and have it good, but you walk away each day feeling drained and exhausted. Well, that exhaustion leads to another dirty little secret that nobody likes to talk about when it comes to living the good life, and it's this. People who live the good life are people who feel empty. People will say, how come I'm not happy? I'm having more, I'm accomplishing more, I'm getting more, but I still don't feel satisfied. Why is it? All the stuff I have, it's great stuff, but I still feel like I'm missing out on something. And it's because they are. The good life will never satisfy you. It can't. It all can do is leave you feeling empty and wanting more. 
And that emptiness leads to yet another dirty little secret that nobody likes to talk about. And it's this. People who live the good life are people who feel enslaved. Even though they're living the good life, people will talk about how they feel trapped by their schedules, right? Work schedules, kids' activities and their schedules. Or sometimes people will talk about feeling trapped by credit card debt, stuff that they bought so they can enjoy the good life, right? Or maybe sometimes people will feel trapped in an unhealthy relationship that they're in. And they initially they got into it thinking, this will help me enjoy the good life, or they'll talk about, sometimes they'll talk about how they feel trapped by guilt because of some poor life choices they, they made all in the name of enjoying the good life. The good life leaves you entra- enslaved and feeling trapped. Thankfully, there's an antidote. Because of the cross of Jesus Christ and because he not just died but rose from the dead, because of the empty tomb, Jesus now wants you to enjoy something better. A much better life. Okay, and that's good news. It should be amazing news for you, frankly. But what is it about this life that makes it not just good, but even better? Well, first, it's a better life because it's a life filled with meaning. It's a life filled with meaning. Way too many people go through their lives without a clue as to why they are here. I mean, think about it. Do you know why you exist? uh, Are you here only to work, raise a couple of kids, have some fun, retire, then grow old and die? Is that it? Personally, I think people want their life to mean more than that. They just don't know where to look. And, And so people will say, well, if I own lots of stuff, then my life will have meaning. But there's always something more to buy. Or they'll think, oh, yeah, if I just achieve this and accomplish that, then my life will have meaning. But there's always something more to do. Or sometimes people will turn to sports or their career or relationships or food or whatever they think will give their life meaning, but it never delivers. So listen to me when I tell you this. If you want your life to have meaning, to make sense, understand this. You were made by God for God. You were made by God so that he could love you and bless you so that you could love him back. That's it. And because of Jesus and the empty tomb, that love-filled relationship is possible. 1 Peter 1, I like how it's worded in the Message Bible. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given, here it is, a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven, and that future starts now. Isn't that great? And notice in, those, in that verse, there are two things I want you to notice. First, this new life, this better life is connected to the empty tomb. Jesus' resurrection is what makes enjoying this new and, and, and experiencing this new and better life possible. Second, the better life is a new life. It's not just an addition to what you're already living. Okay, it's not something you tack on. It's a whole new deal. Okay, unlike products that sometimes will have the label that says new and improved and it's really the same product and, you know, a new packaging. God is saying, I'm giving you a brand new life, a chance to start over. Quick show of hands. How many of you play golf? Have you, any golf players in here? All right, all right. So for those, I don't play a whole lot of golf. Um, I just, you know, don't get around to doing that much. It's not a sport I really care about. But I do know enough about golf to know about these things called mulligans. And for those of you who just raised your hands, how many of you are brave enough to raise your hand and say, yeah, I've taken a mulligan? Oh, good. I thought I was bad. Okay, that's good. Yeah, you made me feel a lot better. So for those of you who don't know, mulligans are when you take a shot, and it's such a horrible shot that it hits a tree and bounces into the woods, right? Instead of hitting that ball out of the woods and hitting more trees on the way out, you just take a, a, a new ball, and then you hit it again. You take a second shot. It's a free shot. It doesn't count against your score. That's a mulligan, right? Personally, I love mulligans. Whenever I play golf, and again, I don't play a lot, but whenever I play golf, I at least take one mulligan every hole. It, <laughs> I love mulligans. Well, guess what? This Easter, Jesus wants to give all of you, even those watching online, all of you a mulligan for your entire life. 
He wants to take your bad decisions and the dumb mistakes that you've made and the harsh words that have come out of your mouth, and he wants to erase all of those things and give you a fresh start. That's what he wants to do. And here's the best part. You don't have to do anything for it. It's his gift to you, and that's huge. Right, Because of your sin, you've created this barrier between you and God. Barrier you can't break down. So Jesus had to break it down for us, for you and for me. And he did it by dying on the cross and taking the punishment for everything we've ever done wrong. That's because of his sacrifice. That's God's gracious gift to you. It's a fresh start. Ephesians 2 says, It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. So because of Jesus... Right? You have a fresh start, a clean slate, and you have this new life, a life where, get this, where you don't live for yourself, contrary to popular opinion. You don't live for yourself. You live for God, where you love him. Remember, he loved you. He wants to bless you. He is blessing you. So you love him back, and you honor him with your thoughts and your words and your attitudes and your decisions. And here's what's really cool. That love for God spills over into the, the love that you have for the people around you, and it impacts them. Huh. So when you think about it, this new life really is a better life, isn't it? A life filled with meaning. But this Life is a better life, secondly, because it is also a life freed by grace. Now, around here at this church, we define the word grace as when God gives you what you need, not what you deserve. So even though you um, should be punished for all of your mistakes and failures, because that's what you deserve, God gives you what you need, forgiveness. And he's able to give you forgiveness because through Jesus' sacrifice, his death on the cross, your sins have been paid for. That's grace. Here's here's what's so amazing about God's grace. It's not just a one-time offer. It's not one and done. You can go to God again and again and confess your sins to him again and again and then yet again, and he will always give you grace. He will always set you free, and it's all because of Jesus. And what is it from which Jesus sets you free? Well, certainly and most obviously, Jesus frees you from the guilt of your past, right? Every sin you've ever committed, whether you did it on purpose or by accident, anything that you did or didn't do that's left you feeling guilty, God completely erases it and and forgives it, and it's gone forever. Second, Jesus frees you from the fear of death. When you believe that Jesus is your personal Savior, that he died for you, that he rose again for you, you you do not have to be afraid of death anymore. Right? You can know that because of the resurrection, because of the empty tomb, death is nothing more than just, you know, a doorway that leads to a, a life of eternity with God in heaven. How cool is that? Third, Jesus frees you from the hurts caused by others. Jesus provides you with the strength you need to let go of the pain that might be holding you down or keeping you from enjoying this new and better life that he wants you to have. And then fourth, Jesus frees you from the expectations of others. Because of Jesus, it doesn't matter what other people think or say about you. It doesn't matter. You are God's child. And that frees you to grow and develop and become the person that God has created you to be. The bottom line is that this better life that is available to us through the empty tomb really is a life of freedom, freed by grace. Now, of course, this life that we enjoy didn't come cheaply, did it? No, it cost Jesus his life. But I'll tell you right now, Jesus willingly gave his life for you, and he'll do it again in a heartbeat so that you would belong to him forever. 1 Timothy 2 says, Christ Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all people. Years ago, a young missionary couple adopted a little boy from Thailand. His parents had to sell him in order to pay off some of their debts. This young missionary couple was so moved that they, um, that they paid the price to buy this boy and, and that, that he would be theirs. And it was an extraordinary price, but they willingly paid it. And then they adopted him. Why? Because they didn't want him to grow up being just a free child. They wanted him to grow up knowing that he was their child, right? So because of Jesus, you have been set free. You have been set free from guilt, hurts, fear, expectations of others, and you have been given this incredible gift of knowing that through Jesus, through the empty tomb, you can be adopted as a son or daughter in God's family. 
That's a gift. Ephesians 1 says, in Jesus we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. See the word redemption there? That's when somebody pays the price to set you free. And that's what Jesus did. Through the cross, through the empty tomb, you have been set free. You are freed from anything that might keep you from enjoying this new, this much, much better life. But it gets even better. Okay, when Jesus says that I'm going to give you this new life, this better life, it doesn't stop there. He, guess what he tells you to do with your old life? The old life that is filled with dirty secrets, remember, that leaves you exhausted, empty, and enslaved. He, he wants you to throw it out. Look at this in Ephesians 4. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Put it off. Get rid of it. Throw it out. I mean, if somebody were to give you a brand new leather jacket, expensive jacket, let's say it's a couple hundred dollars, maybe $800, nice jacket, and you had this old jacket and it's dirty, it stinks, it's torn, you don't put the new jacket over the old jacket, do you? No. You don't do that. What do you do with the old jacket? Tell me. You throw it out. Exactly. And that's what God wants you to do with your old life. He doesn't want you to hang on to it. It stinks. It's torn. It leaves you exhausted, empty, and enslaved. Get rid of it and enjoy the new life, this better life. Clothe yourself with that, right, that God offers to you through the empty tomb, a life freed by grace. Third, this life is a better life because it is also a life full of power. Just quick show of hands again. How many of you have ever felt overwhelmed? Have you ever felt overwhelmed by stuff? Yeah, it happens, does it? Just quick show of hands. How many of you are feeling overwhelmed by everything you got to get done today for Easter? Oh, yeah, got it. Yep. All right, Jeremiah 31 says, I will refresh the weary and those who feel faint. That's what God says. And so if you feel overwhelmed, plug into his power. And how do you tap into this power of God for this new, better life that God offers to you through the empty tomb? One way is be here. Be here in worship. Seriously, you want to plug into God's power, come to worship. Every time you come and, and receive Holy Communion, you receive God's power. Whenever you open up his word and you let God talk to you for 10, 15 minutes each day, you're receiving God's power. When you connect with God throughout the day in prayer, you're tapping into God's power. See how it's easy. Plug into God's power so that you can enjoy this better life because I'll tell you right now, you cannot do this on your own. Zechariah 4 says, you will not succeed of your own strength or power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Plug into the power that is available to you through the empty tomb. Plug into the power that the Holy Spirit makes available to you today and every day. Plug into that power so that you can enjoy and experience a better life. Now, obviously, living the better life does not mean that it's going to be a problem-free life, right? Life is full of problems. The difference, though, is that now, with Christ, you have the power to face all those difficulties and problems and stresses and worries, everything. 2 Corinthians 4 says, Therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. I'm looking around at all of you and I'm thinking maybe some of you came in today a little tired, a little worn out, maybe a little on the edge. Maybe you feel like giving up on a friendship or maybe on your marriage. Maybe you feel like um, giving up on your job or on your schoolwork. Or maybe you feel like giving up on your health because you just don't seem to be getting any better. Or maybe you feel like giving up on your teenager because they're just making one bad choice after another. Let me just challenge you. Don't give up. Look up. Right? Look up in faith and say, God, please give me the help, the strength, the power that you know that I need so that I don't just live life, but I enjoy and experience this so much better life that you make available a life full of power. Romans 6 says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, so in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Right? A new life, a better life, 
a life filled with meaning, freed by grace, full of power, a life that God offers to all of you right here, right now, as a gift, a life that is available through the empty tomb. So let me challenge you in a couple of ways this week. Ready? Here we go. Number one, rejoice that God offers you mulligans. <laughs> Whether you play golf or not, doesn't matter. Give thanks that, that because of what Jesus did through his life, death, and resurrection, God is willing to give you forgiveness. And not just once, right? Again and again and again. Second, ask God to help you get rid of your old life. Like that old, dirty, stinky jacket. Get rid of the life that leaves you exhausted, empty, and enslaved. And replace it with this new life. This, this life that Jesus has won for you. Third, plug into God's power to enjoy the blessings of a better life. Okay, again, doesn't mean it's not going to be, a, it won't be a problem-free life, right? But... Now you can know that with Christ, you have the power to face those problems and those difficulties in his power. Resurrection power. The power of the empty tomb. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, there are people here today, or even watching online, who may never have had a, a personal relationship with you. So Jesus, open their hearts and their minds to you right now. More than anything, Lord, thank you that after dying on the cross, there was an empty tomb. And through that empty tomb, we can have and enjoy not just a good life, but a much, much better life. A new life filled with meaning, freedom, and power. Bless us with this better life, Lord Jesus. We love you. We pray all this in your great and holy name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. Great message. We'll continue our worship with our offerings. Uh, a reminder, please put your connection cards and your prayer cards in there. And uh, along with your offerings, thank you for supporting all these ministries that we get to do here. And we're going to sing about the resurrection at the same time. Let's stand for our prayer time. Lord, just thank you for this opportunity for us to gather together and worship as your family. We thank you for the bells and the choir and the brass, the music, the prayers, the message. Thank you for helping us focus in on who you are and how much you love us. Lord, help us to glorify you. 
as, as our risen Lord and Savior, give us this life of meaning, a life freed by grace, full of your power, and draw us close to you and your will in our lives, not only today, but every day. Thank you, Lord, for being the mulligan for each time we sin. Thank you for the grace and the forgiveness. Lord, at this time, we lift up some members of our church and their families and people who are facing medical situations for Joyce Bauer, Wendy Jo Burson, for Jim Breeze, Carrie Deal, Joe George, Dennis Goodhart Sr., Hudson Learman, Janet Majka, Jean Meisner, Chad Morrison, Jason Pfeffer, uh, Evelyn Rowenstein, Jack Rudolph, Melanie Schuett, Don Spitz, Pastor John Sugatan, Charles Swigget, Bill Teske, Sherry Whippenbeck, Mark Woodward, Elsie Craig. Lord, you know each one. You handmade each one. You rose from the dead for them so that they can have eternal life. But Lord, we pray that you would comfort them in their time of need. Thank you for doctors and nurses and medical teams. And we ask that you would bring healing and comfort to each of these individuals. We shared the promise of the resurrection with the family of Tom Valkoff, passed away last week, Lord, and we share it as well with the family of Paul Brown uh, in his passing on Friday. Be with his father, Ken Brown, and be with brother Joel Brown. Be with the whole family as they'll gather on Tuesday in Columbus to celebrate his life. Lord, when we lose life, it's hard, and yet it is a celebration, in fact, because you have told us over and over and over again that through faith, we go from life here to life eternal. We uh, do prayers of thanksgiving for Carla and Mike Hoopengardner, the birth of their new grandson, Grant Dutton. Lord, be with Dana and Reese, the parents. Let this child know and grow. I know they're already talking about baptism and, and allowing the child to have that Holy Spirit work in their lives. Remind us of our baptisms as we stand here, your children, through faith. Lord, we look for peace in the world. Quite frankly, let it start with each one of us. Let us be peace-filled. Let us be ones that are peacemakers in our lives. We look for wisdom and guidance and integrity and compassion for all leaders everywhere. Lord, hear every prayer that we offer to you, but at this time we lift up that family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. May the power of Almighty God, who raised Jesus to new life, strengthen you in hope, enrich you with his love, and fill you with his unending joy. Amen. Jesus is alive. Let us shout, Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Reminder, Evelyn will be up here after the service for additional prayers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for worshiping with us this day.